Well, good morning and welcome to another morning and project with a guy and his projects. Today we're working on the 2001 Ford F-250 four-wheel drive 6.8 liter V10 gasser super duty. Uh, we're replacing the AC system. Well, I'm just going to replace the whole system, the orifice tube, dryer, compressor, the condenser as well right here before you hit your radiator. And there's no screen or anything in the grill, so it takes all of the abuse. A lot of the fins are bent down. It's pretty nasty. I'm going to replace that too because might as well. And then at that point, the only thing left that we're not replacing is the evaporator. And usually I don't because they're under the dash and super pain in the butt to get to. But this one is actually in the engine bay. Easy access. There's no cabin filter. So after 20 years, I'm going to imagine that uh, it's pretty, pretty clogged. So we're going to go ahead and replace that too. And we're going to have a whole freaking brand new system for this truck. So... With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. You may notice, you may see in the picture right now, those fancy nice little mirrors. That's a nice little upgrade. We just did a video on that. Uh, at the time of this video, it'll be posting next week, which means by the time this posts, it's already there. So go check out that video if you want to see how to put in the, those mirrors. I do a little review and install video. Um, also, we got these, got the lift on, no video, had some complications. So these are the 33 inch tires. We're going to put on the 30 five inch tires we have some road one calvary mud terrains that are going on there not a whole lot of info online about them so i figured i'll give them a try and see what uh see if there's a fuss worth making about them so stay tuned i want to do a review on those uh tires coming up uh, and install well not install i'm not going to install them but so stay tuned let's do it So your little parts list today is your new compressor. I'm using a UAC. Uh, part number on this one is FS10 is the model number. It's 134A of course with PAG46. You need to have a bottle of PAG46 ready to go for later because this only comes with five of the so many ounces you need. Comes with a couple of O-rings, probably not everything you need. Some instructions to tell you how much oil is in there. And that's your compressor. Okay, we're also using UAC condenser, uh, part number CN4883PFC. That's going to be our condenser. That's what's going in uh, right behind your grill. Comes in pretty well packaged. We'll unpackage it when we get there. As we mentioned, we're also replacing the evaporator. We're using evaporator UAC EV0174PFXC. Uh, why are we using UAC for everything? Because they were cheap and the truck's old, so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. That's the evaporator. That's going in your engine bay. Not under your dash like you would think. And then, of course, we got your receiver dryer, which you always need anytime you open the system. You need to replace this bad boy. This is part number, there it is. 1411655 and I totally just dumped the rest of it into the evaporator box. The rest of it is simply a set of O-rings and a new orifice tube. Should we get started? Let's get started. So in order to get the compressor, we're going to do the compressor first. I like to do the hard part far first. Plus, we have to get the belt off to do the air com or the AC compressor. Anytime I'm working on a vehicle, if there's part of it that is going to disable the vehicle, I like to get that part done first because I want to be able to go somewhere if I have to later. So we're going to do the compressor first. In order to do the compressor, I'm going to go in through the wheel well on the passenger side, uh, mainly because it's going to be a lot of bending over up top. There's no access, and I think it should be pretty good access from this side, I think. We're going to find out. So let's go. First off, I'm going to jack the truck up, take the tire off, give us some room, take the wheel well liner out, and then we'll see if we're on the right track at that point. So I should have mentioned before as well, I'm not going to show you how to 
uh, recover the refrigerant in the system. That should be done by somebody that has the ability to do it properly and legally. If you don't have that ability, then please take your vehicle into the shop, have them recover the refrigerant, take it back home and do the repair. Um, if you do have the equipment to do it legally, you don't need to watch this video for it. So that's where I stand on that. I know I want to piss a lot of you off, but that's where I stand. So moving on, we're going to try and access the compressor. We got to take this wheel well liner out. Now my truck is 19 years old, been worked on before, and almost every single bolt was a different size. Uh, so not sure if it came stock that way or if it's just been worked on, but you got a couple push pins, you got 8 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, 7 millimeter, 8 millimeter, all kinds of different size bolts holding this thing in. As far as getting it out, just be aggressive, rip it out, throw it aside, and be done with it. Uh, this air box or vacuum box, whatever the heck it is, is attached directly to the liner. So when you pull that out, this is going to fall. You can disconnect it, get out of the way, or just push it. This is your AC compressor you're looking at right there. Uh, we're going to start by getting the mounting bolts out of the way because to get the line set off, the ratchet just wasn't quite setting correctly. You have three mounting bolts, uh, one upper and two lower. So go ahead and break those loose. You're going to undo them all the way very much better access going from underneath and through that wheel well. The lower bolt in the back, uh, you won't be able to get all the way out, just loosen it and then it'll come out when you pull the compressor out. Also important to note, you're going to have to pull the belt off of the pulley for the compressor. Just get your breaker bar, your serpentine belt tool, whichever, release tension on the tensioner and pull the belt off of the compressor. Whoever's helping you do that, make sure they don't pinch your fingers. That will hurt. So anyway, back down. Now that you got your compressor disconnected or unmounted, you can break the line set loose. Yes, the compressor's going to move, but the header was in the way before removing the compressor, so we couldn't get a dead hit on the bolt and we were stripping it. But after you take that compressor off its mounts, you have much better access to get that bolt out. There it is. You can see all the dye from some previous person. Disconnect your electrical, just take a little screwdriver, pull the pin off, and you can pull the thing right out. The compressor now can drop straight down. Pretty easy access, actually. Just watch out for any oil that dumps out of the ports that are now exposed. So what we have here, this is the old one, obviously. I mean, it looks old. Um, and this is what was happening. You can probably hear this. You can kind of hear the bearing squeech in there. And then this little stupid clutch plate. Uh, so that's how we knew it was going. It was on the way out. But then this, this is the clutch pack. I mean, heck, I can do that with my pinky finger. Whee! Should not be the case. It should have definitely have some resistance to it. So we know this was going bad. It wasn't really cooling. And that's obvious. Compared to the new one, look, that's silent. No, I did not just mute you. It's just that silent. Oh yeah, so this was definitely on the way out as we knew and uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to show you. So moving on. You want to get your new compressor set up before getting it in the truck. So it comes with these little bushing sleeves to help you line up and mount. Get those in first, just match it up to how the old one was in there. And then installs reverse of removal. Just kind of slide it up there how you got the old one out. Leave the plastic cap for the line set on. You don't want to spill all your oil, brand spanking new oil. So just leave it on until you get it up in there. Just fish it, wiggle it, squish it, wiggle it, whatever it takes to get it up in there. It can be difficult, especially there's some wires that I was getting caught up on that you know you can see in the camera, but I couldn't see in person. So once you get it in about the right spot don't bolt it in because again that header gets in the way go ahead and undo the screw with the plastic cover and that just pops off our compressor came with brand new o-rings already installed ready to rock so we didn't even remove them now the tricky part is that line set doesn't really twist and turn a whole lot so you got to get it lined up the best you can without mounting it uh, back into the frame so just do what you can, get that bolt in, and make sure you're set up good. Once you do that, make sure you get this back bottom bolt in first because once you get the compressor in place, you're not going to fit it. And then you can, of course, do your other top and bottom bolts. Just get them hand threaded. 
and once all three of them are in you can just start torquing them down to your manufacturer torque specs once you have it all tightened in go ahead and put your electrical back on your compressor keep in mind you are mounted your line sets on and now we can put the belt back on to the pulley you are now free to drive if you have to just not to use the AC which is something I like to do you're gonna get this plastic crap off uh, we're gonna do your condenser next get it out of the way and there's this little plastic cover there to protect it uh, I like to look at the new parts first make sure they match up it did so we can go ahead and undo the lines from the condenser uh, it's just bolted into the studs and then these just slide in and out next is your condenser brackets uh, there's two one on the left one on the right the one on the right you can just move out of the way after you loosen it and then your condenser should just pick straight up easy peasy except for the fact that the hood latch is in the way so again two more bolts undo those get the hood latch out of the way put your bolts back where you won't lose them and your condenser now slides straight out easy peasy look at that and as you can see ours was pretty beat up take advantage of the clearance now go ahead and clean your radiator transmission cooler oil cooler all that stuff uh, while you have easy access you're going to take the o-rings off of the lines find some new ones Get your PAG 46 oil because we're going to lube up the new O-rings before we put them on. It just makes it slide a lot easier and makes life a lot easier in general. And go ahead and slide those new O-rings on. All right, so now you have your new condenser. Goes back in just like the old one came out. Slide it into its two little holders on the bottom. Just like so. Take the protective caps off. Now you probably saw in the video right now, which I didn't in person because whatever, uh, the new condenser actually came with studs zip tied to it. I completely missed that so I removed the ones from the old condenser to use those. Nothing wrong with that except didn't have to, but whatever. Go ahead and put your lines back on. You can either do the studs first or after, doesn't matter. So the bottom one I did first, uh, the top one I did after. Uh, but you just snug your studs in and then your nuts. Just like so. Go ahead and put your brackets back on. No particular order, left, right, doesn't matter. Tighten those down. shouldn't be able to move the condenser a whole lot after you're in just like that and of course don't forget to put your hood latch back on boom that part's done put your cover on two of the main components have been replaced now you guys are well on your way to finishing up here pretty quick so this is your filter dryer you got to take that top line set off and it's just another nut and you can pull the line out tuck that over get it out of your way this is going from the evaporator to the dryer. A couple of adjustable wrenches will work out just fine. And pow. Now you got your electrical for the dryer, your little low pressure switch. That just unscrews. You might need a little channel locks to get it started, but don't forget about it for later. This thing, these two little levers right here, they just pop right up and pull off. I have no idea why it's there in the first place, just to protect it, I guess. I don't know, but anyway super easy to get off now you're going to unmount your dryer from the evaporator box there's three bolts two on the engine side one on the other side and then that little rubber grommet thing boom this was the original you can see the date code on there from 2000 and it's 2020 right now get your little AC removal tool pop it in boom pops out just like that easy peasy here is your orifice tube this is why <laughs> we were having issues wait till you see this sucker right here uh, grab a little needle nose whatever it takes to get that thing out oh my gosh look at that crap that was causing a severe restriction in my system uh, that, <laughs> that is the worst one I've ever seen out of all I've done alright so now taking the top uh, this little evap bracket canister thing off you're just going to take that off, remove it, get it out of the way. 
Uh, this is so we can get to the evaporator. There's like 10 bolts we had to take to get this cover off. I'm not going to show you in the video because it was dumb. You're just going to have to find them yourself. But once you get all those bolts out, you can take this cover off. That's your evaporator cover. There's a little bracket right here. It's mounted under uh, four bolts total, two underneath the, or two up top. Well, I don't know what you want to call that. And then two on the evaporator box. Once you get that removed, you can then pick up your evaporator coil and pull it out. Uh, pretty much pulling it straight towards the front bumper was the best way for me. I'm sure you can get it up and over. Uh, you may have to play around a little bit, but it does come out. Just be patient and try not to scratch yourself up on all this plastic and stuff. Boom. That's your evaporator coil. It actually looked pretty good on that side, and I was kind of surprised. And then we flipped it over, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's more like what I expected. You could see it was leaking, uh, all that crust and buildup, and that was all dirt caught by the oil on the system. This is your new evaporator coil. Goes in just like your old one came out. Just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle it in. And it should fall right into place when you find that sweet spot right there. All right, again, not gonna show you this whole cover thing because there's a bazillion bolts and it took like an hour. Uh, you just have to find them. Put your bracket on, back on for both of those. And then for your filter dryer lines, go ahead and pull off all the old O-rings. We're gonna do the same thing, lube up the new ones. And one by one, just get them on. There's three of them in a row. The easiest to do the back and work your way front. I mean, sorry, easiest to do the front and work your way back because then your O-rings can slide over the other grooves rather than falling into them and having to fish them back out. Just for comparison, these were your orifice tubes. On the right is the new one, on the left is the old one. That is absolutely disgustingly horrible. You're gonna lube this up as well and just slide it back in. You want it to sit all the way down in the back. If it doesn't sit all the way down, you're gonna have issues later. So find out where it fits good and then just push it in with your uh, needle nose pliers or whatever you're using. And then you can push this back in. When you push it in, you gotta wait for it to snap and clip. You'll know when it happens and then you won't be able to pull it back apart. Uh, it's very simple. All right, so getting your dryer back into the evaporator is the same exact process. Lube it up and uh, screw it on a couple crescent wrenches, uh, channel locks, whatever it takes. Now you have your electrical for your low pressure switch. Lube up that O-ring and put your electrical back on. Don't crank this down, it's just plastic. Just get it tight. Put a lug your electrical in, boop, there you go. And then this is the line going into from your compressor into the dryer. So go ahead and lube that up as well. Put a new O-ring on it. Slap it in. And put your nut on top. All right. So now before you start it up, very important, the instructions on this compressor wants you to turn this a full 8 to 10 revolutions. Do that after it's installed, not before. That's the last thing you do. And that uh, just gets the oil circulating. So there's not a lot of uh, pressure when you first start it up and it blows itself out. All right, so that's all there is to it. Installing your, uh, or replacing your AC system. Uh, as you saw, we replaced the compressor, the condenser, orifice tube, the filter dryer, and the evaporator all on this system. Um, it working, it's working much better. As you saw, the uh, orifice tube on the old orifice tube had all kinds of gunk and nastiness in it which was giving me a, uh, a restriction in the system. So the compressor is trying to compress and trying to push that refrigerant out, but I was getting stuck and slowed down right before the evaporator and the orifice tube. So by replacing that, technically we could have just replaced the orifice tube, but anytime you open the system, you really need to re replace the dryer. And then because the compressor has been working overly hard for such a long time, as you saw that comparison, uh, the clutch and everything was worn out and rattling and scratchy and uh, bearings were going out so we just replaced it anyway. Uh, and then anytime you get a failed compressor in a modern vehicle you pretty much have to replace the condenser because the tubes are so small you can't flush the crap out. And this one was pretty beat up anyway 
And at that point, the only thing left was the evaporator. There's no cabin air filter, so we went ahead and replaced the evaporator as well. It was easy in this truck because it's in the engine bay and not underneath the dash like most. It's blowing nice and cold. It feels beautiful in this cabin right now. It's about 106 degrees outside. So overall, I'm pretty happy. So one thing we did notice is uh, I was trying to figure out how, to, how the best way to go about it was. And the way I did it, and the way it is in the video, I think, honestly, if I was to do it again, is exactly how I'd do it again. I don't always say that. Sometimes after I do it, I'm like, wow, I could have done that so much better. But the way I did this system, I feel was the most efficient way. We got the compressor out of the way. Uh, it was way easier just to go ahead and take that tire off in the fender liner. Just get rid of that. You have so much more room to work. The uh, bottom left bolt on that compressor, uh, you can't pull the bolt all the way out in order uh, without pulling out the compressor so we broke it loose and we pulled it out but we weren't able to get the bolt out and removed in consequence the other way around when you put the new compressor in make sure you have that bolt in there ahead of time or you're well, you'll hate yourself later also in order to get the line set off of the compressor uh, we found it was we couldn't get a ratchet in on that screw head so in order to take the line set off the compressor, we busted the compressor loose from its mount so we could move the compressor away from the headers. That allowed us to get in there with the ratchet and bust the lines off. Vice versa, putting the new compressor in, you have to do the same thing. You have to feed that bolt in from the bottom left and then put the line set back on before you screw and uh, move the compressor in and put it in place. Just a little tip for you. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I didn't show you how to fill the system back up. Uh, I didn't show you how to vacuum it. If you have a vacuum, I'm going to assume you know how to use it. If not, I'm sure you can find a YouTube video on how to use that. If you know how to use it, then you know how to vacuum out your system. Uh, same with refilling it with the refrigerant. Uh, if, you have ref uh, if you have the ability to fill it up properly and you know how, then you don't need to watch a video. If you don't know how, I'm going to recommend you don't do it. Um, that's just my personal recommendation take it in have them vacuum out the system and then fill it up for you i think that's the best way i don't want to waste mine and your time showing you how to do it there's too many intricacies to get it charged just right it's not just about weighing it in it's about your super heat sub cooling all that good stuff so if you don't know how just take it in for that portion uh, don't get mad at me for not showing it please uh, overall I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with how cool it is in the cab right now for being 106 degrees outside. Uh, everything's riding good and smooth. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we've done some other projects to this truck, including these mirrors. I don't know if you can see these tow mirrors. There's a, I have a video uh, review and install on how to put on the tow mirrors uh, as opposed to this single arm, little tiny crap, about the same size as a car mirrors that this thing came with. If you want to see that, check out my channel. I've got other things coming up. Um, we've got, I'm going to, I got to change the uh, cooling fan. I got to change the belt. Uh, we're probably going to have to change out the whole entire power steering pump. Uh, it's leaking, it's cracked, it's not good. So stay tuned. I got some videos coming. Until next time, see you guys later.